very, very normal Irish background to Formula One, or do you measure the height that you went um, to get a uh, Formula One and you probably could have gone further? So, which, which do you, what journey do you value most? Uh, his journey from um, uh, nowhere in Ireland, uh, totally outside mo motorsport um, uh, background, uh, to Formula One, or do you measure the talent that did not make it as far as it should have? Because I think it's no one would deny that he had the talent to be to be a world champion. Um, but there are many things in motorsport. It's very different to any other sport. You need money to to proceed. You, uh, talent alone won't be uh, far enough. Um, it's different with football or tennis or any other sport. A pair of boots and your once you've the talent, it usually gets through, unless you unless there's a huge problem with someone's character. Now, people may argue that there was a problem with Thomas' character, but at the same time, um, his life could have been so much different if he had a little bit more money. He, they would have seen past that, and he could have, he could have helped navigate a better path, like a lot of other drivers do. Yeah. We, um, I mean, I, I watch Formula One on Sunday afternoons, and the boys take an interest in it, but not really um, a proper anorak about it. Mm. I learned a lot about motorsport from watching Formula One. Were you, were you a motorsport enthusiast before the movie? Not at all. I didn't even categorize it as a sport. <laughs> <laughs> I really didn't. I just totally gr didn't grow up with that. It wasn't, it's, I had a normal Irish background. Um, some interest in Formula One, very little, um, as like most Irish youngsters, and never knew a heard of Tommy. But bit by bit, you just get sucked in, like in every film um, that you direct or that you're part of. You become a magpie and you just hang with these people and you uh, learn from them and you become immersed in their world because that's what you have to do. You have to become somehow an authority on on the on the story you're, you're, you're leading. Yeah. And there were plenty of uh, big names in uh, in Formula One, McLaren especially, which were mentioned, uh, who were talked about rather than who were in the film. Were there approaches made? To yes, yes, very much so. But uh, I think um, this is the story of a driver from 1981, and I think uh, anyone who follows McLaren at the moment, they have enough difficulties, I think, in getting a car to finish a race and to finish in the top 10, maybe then perhaps Tommy Byrne's story, you know. So I, I don't, in the in the annals of McLaren to today, I don't think they see Tommy Byrne um, as a big part of their story. As a big part of their story, yeah. whereas he really could have. It could have. It must have been vaguely helpful, though. I mean, the footage of his test, which, I mean, who owns the... Who owns that footage? I mean, they must, surely. Uh, no, actually, no, it was just Tommy's friends. As you can uh, hear in the film, Tommy had a lot of good friends. Um, he's that kind of character. You spend a bit of time with him, and you, you are his friend. You want to help him out. And um, you go, you look at other drivers like Senna and Martin Brundle and Nigel Mansell from that era. There are a lot, the BBC and um, other archives have a lot of their races. Tommy was just another driver who, who just slipped through the slipped through the net and there wasn't, a, I guess, not much archive existed in those archives. So with all the archives you see, that's from Tommy's friends. They, they recorded that they were his, they were his groupies. They recorded all that from TV on the 80s. Every Saturday or Sunday was on Grandstand or they recorded it. So there was very little archive in the archives. Yeah. We mostly got that, we mostly sourced it from, um, from Tommy's friends. Yeah. Okay, now who's got a question? Right, uh, well, I'm, why not put your hand went up first? Just, you want me to stand over here? Just, okay, I want you to stand over here. Am I standing in the right place now? Great, so who's got a question? I noticed um, in the last 15 minutes we had some, I mean the movie comes home quite <coughs> sweetly and well and you feel good about the movie you've seen even though there was you know, <coughs> insane stuff in Mexico earlier and, and that terrible story about half day and speed sick thing about. Um, but we see quickly um, his sons mm -hmm. but we don't see them at any other point did they not want to be in the movie oh it's just part of Tommy's story there's so much of the story which just didn't make the cut didn't make the, the cut and flow you know one of Tommy's sons are here is here to, uh, today yeah uh, Jeff is here um, um, I'll, I'll put in a comment at some point whenever you're ready okay can you get the microphone yeah. to Jeff please? yeah um, yeah, and there's just so much of Tommy's story that just didn't make it, crazy situations that didn't make it, but you just have to f navigate it and see what story tells best misery. Yes. And the results that you have. You can follow lots of stories, but uh, a lot of them are very interesting, and some of them are probably more madder and crazier than, than the ones you, you saw, but you just gotta know your archive, know the visuals that you have, and try and create a story with, with those visuals. And 
coming. So was he enthusiastic about having a new Commando venue? Very enthusiastic about the movie being made. Um, maybe not so enthusiastic about 12 hour days and working on to do. Um, but I think uh, uh, that's just life as a, as, a, as a director. And you have to, as a producer, you just have to bring them on as best you can. And there's a, there was a real, there was a real wish on Tommy's part not to hang on the coattails of Bennett. A lot of um, articles and any article that's been written about Tommy has always tried, somehow tried to hang Tommy's story on, on Senna's book. And um, though we, he's very much part of the story, he gets a little bit uneasy being compared to Senna. He doesn't really like it, you know, um, because he believes, he probably be, firmly believes he was a talent to Senna. But as he said a few times, you know, how would Tommy have reacted if he had Senna's um, uh, resources and his, his uh, the overall package Senna? He probably would have gone into racing at all. Yeah. And he might have changed something. Jeff, hello, welcome. First hello. First time in Sheffield? It is, yeah, first time here. Just, I, I didn't see it very much, to be fair. I, I walked from the train station across the road and then I got into here and, and that's it so far. But it looks very nice. I like the water fountain outside the train station. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I get a couple of things I'd like to say. Um, one is about the, um, the production. I, I, I did go around to some of the, um, to the filming and I, I took the opportunity to hang out with my dad last year and the, the year before while the guys were making the, the pilot for this. And, uh, and I, I was really impressed. I, I really liked the, uh, the passion that Sean and David and their, their crew had for making this project, you know, and the, just seeing it grow. And I was talking to Sean, of course, being Irish, there was a couple of beers and evenings involved in, in these things, you know, and uh, it, was, it was really good. You know, you, you could see the, the vision that Sean had for the film and, you know, you know exactly in his mind what, what kind of shots he needed to do and what he wanted to, the, the story he wanted to tell. Although, I think as he said himself, you know, whatever plan you've got, you have to drop that at, at some point, because it just changes. You, you couldn't know then what you know now about my dad, about Tommy, and uh, about the motorsport world, because it's, it's just a big learning experience as you went. And, and I thought that you guys did a really great job, you know, very moving sitting here watching that today. Good to you, Jeff. Thanks very much. Um, in terms of my dad, I'd like to say, you know, thank, thank you all for, for coming here and watching the, the film. I, I didn't grow up with Tommy. I'm not one of the little guys in those shots. You know, I was uh, the long lost son here from England who grew up on the, on the south coast. But uh, he welcomed me into his life with open arms uh, when I was around 21, just uh, <coughs> early year, but I'm 37 now, so a few years ago, you know, and, and he is an amazing person. You know, he's very, very kind very, very open, very honest, and uh, obviously the, the talent that he had in his, uh, in motorsports, and not just motorsports, but the ideas, you know, the imagination that comes from his mind, the, it was the imagination that steered his heart from one thing to another, you know, there's the question of whether he went far enough, or whether, you know, who thought it was that he didn't go further, I just think, you know, I'm incredibly proud of his achievements, and how he managed to do what he did, you know, I think it's fantastic. Very good. And do you think as a portrait of him as a character, as an individual, the sorts of things that are important to him, aside from that story of achievement or not, or whatever, do you think it's uh, an accurate depiction of your father? There's, um, it is pretty good, although, to be fair, that he's got a spark inside him that doesn't necessarily come across in that footage. You know, the, 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 the charm, the, the happiness, you know, the, the, the wittiness, the funniness that's within him. Um, it's something that you guys would have all experienced completely, but not necessarily when the camera is turned on, you know. Probably, like, the camera, unfortunately, turns off and boom, he's alive, you know. It's, um, so, in, in some respects, you're missing a little bit of that spark there in, in, the, in the film. But that's, that's again, I guess, the, the discomfort, you know, with, with his story being told, in a way, you know, I, I'm sure it's, it's very happy with the, the film, but at the same time, you know, if the, if the camera's on you and the spotlight's on you and the story's about you, it's a little bit uncomfortable, isn't it, to, to, to be there, yeah. Anybody? Uh, just up the back there, so the seconds back, right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
First of all, to say what a fantastic film I thought it was, uh, you know, really, really strong. Um, very much a, a journeyman aspect as well, which is relevant to, to lots of sports, you know, not just Formula One. But I just want to know about the relationship with, with Tommy and how that maybe changed throughout the course of the film. Was there any, um, obviously there's a necessity for him to get his story out there and, and maybe put some sort of demons to, to bed. But I mean, did you have to change the tone as you went along to, to make it less kind of, I don't know, remorseful and, and upbeat? How, how did that change as, as things happen? Well, with myself and David, we met Tommy in a pub in Drogheda for the very first time, and he told us details, within 20 seconds he told us details about his life that um, that were shocking, that you just don't expect to hear. He is just an open book. He need, sometimes he needs to be, he needed a minor in Formula 1. He needs, he needs a minor in life. He needs, um, he has no problems about opening up any part of his life. Um, he needs to be taken care of, taken care of, I don't mean that in a way that, uh, he's ill or anything like that, but he just, um, it's an open book. His whole life is just, he just tells you. He has no, no, he's no string. He doesn't have any regret about anything that's happened. It's happened, it's happened. Um, uh, regrets with Tommy, um, a little. There are some there. There are definitely some regrets there. And um, he has serious issues with some people in Formula One. But at the same time, um, He's parked that, and for him, he's working in motorsport. Um, um, and I think that's the most important thing to him. He's still involved in the sport, be that the coaching and in, in, in driving school. It might not be the path that he had hoped for, but it's the path that um, um, he's still involved in motorsport. I think that's probably, for him, that's that's the main thing. But Tommy, um, he is so open. He is just one of those characters in life you meet. He's just so open and is prepared to tell you his innermost secrets. You know, that would just two stops into a pint. You know, that's the way he is. Good, thanks. Um, down here, please. Hey, hello. Hi, hello. That was really good. Thank you. Um, it's fantastic. I, I normally find uh, these sort of films very difficult to follow because the cast will round and round. And you had this thing where you just presented individual aspects of the person. So my question is, you're preparing the film for the Sheffield Dog Fest, you're preparing it for a year. Was there anything, I mean, that you sometimes thought, oh, I wish I put that in or something? Um. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Everything, is, you don't, I don't know what the term is. You, you never actually um, finish the film. You just have to hand it over at some stage. Yes. And there are all the things that you just have to, you want to change and you just don't want to, you could, you could spend another, we could spend another 10 weeks in the end of John. You know, it's just, just, you can just keep going and keep going and keep going and just never let go of it. But at some stage, you just have to let go uh, and let it have its. You've got to move on and let it have its own life, really. And though this is a motorsport film, I think it's about a guy who had a dream of being in Formula One and he just didn't make it. And how he, when he slipped down the other side, how he how he reacted to that. Uh, it might not be the way that me and you might react to, uh, but we don't know. You know, imagine being that good at something. That good that you are, you could be world champion, and for some reason, for many reasons, in Tommy's case, you're not achieving that. That's something we probably none of us, maybe well, some of you might, uh, but I know I won't uh, feel being that good at something, being enough to be world champion, and not achieving that, and being that close. Um, it's a lot to live with. Thank you. Thank you. Good question. Thank you. <coughs> Just um, down there, man. Uh, I just want to say thanks, Sean. That was a really great documentary. Uh, I learned a lot from what you mentioned at the start. Uh, I've never heard of it beforehand. Um, and I've only seen an article on this a couple of days ago, which is the other reason that I came here. But um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, but I'd definitely be telling all my Irish family and friends about it. Because my only question is that, you know, has Tommy seen it? And did he have any input to say, take that out, or I really want you to show it this way? Or did he have any, any sort of viewpoint on it? Good one. That was my next question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, he has seen it. I think he has seen it. He, he's seen versions of this. Um, and I, I, to be honest, I think he didn't have any issue with the whole with the whole um, film. I think he may have had an issue with an article that ran recently uh, as promotion for the film when he was compared to Seth. Um, he's fine with the with the talent being being uh, being uh, compared, but he he, he had an issue with. Still be compared with 
he called him Muhammad Ali or the Sheikh Musa. You know, uh, things didn't work out for him, and he was living in that reality, and uh, he was being compared to Sen, and, you know, who was multiple time world champion. You know, that's the only uh, hang up he, he he probably has about how the story is being told necessarily, and we were quite we were mindful of that that um, we had to be true to Tommy's talent. We had to be hard enough on him so that he realised some of this was his was his fault, but also be open to the fact that there were doors shut in his face, most definitely, because he didn't have the money or the backing, and maybe the background and the the, the nuances to navigate through, which is a very elite sport, more so. And what was important is Tommy would never get to where he got now. He could never get there. He he couldn't get to. The, he, I really don't know if he can get to this. Some of the motor enthusiasts might be here. I don't know. Could he get to Formula Four, which is the entry level, with no money? Do you think things have changed? Oh, they have. Even, 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 even now, in the worst. Oh, even now, even to get to, to run one of those cars now, like the empty dies, where with Cliff Dempsey, I think it might be hundred thousand just mm -hmm. to get to the entry level. Yeah. And there's no way Tommy could ever afford for that. And it is a perverse sport, isn't it, where the talent has to pay to play? Mm -hmm. I can't think of another sport where that's the case. It is, but uh, it's the reality as well. You know, it is a those cars go around for a couple of a couple hundred million, you know. So and for you must look back at for Ron Dennis's point of view, could he have Tommy driving you know, being his his main guy. His uh, driving you know, in his suit and driving with all his sponsors. Was that a risk? I, I guess Ron Dennis took saw it as too much of a risk, like Eddie Jordan just mentioned. Yeah. And did um, did Tommy move you in any directions editorially other than you learning about his story and finding bits that would be interesting would be filming it, which by the way the movie certainly did and which he did. The, 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 the second half of that young man's question was, um, did Tommy go, right, I've got an opportunity now to tell this ridiculous story or whatever, and and I don't not tell me what movie to make, but you know, tell me which pages of chapter to read? Or? Not particularly, no. He didn't read, he was prepared to work, which is strange for Dr. Richard Maker, you know, you ask your questions and he, he he answered. He just, you know, again, an open book. He, he does it. He, he has made discussions with producer David, really, about where the film should go or not go. Um, no, he was very open. You know, he's relaxed. He's laid back, and I think he's comfortable with the story now, um, and um, how that, how, how the, how that story is portrayed to him. Yeah. Okay. Is anyone else? <coughs> well, we might leave it there. If anyone, wants. oh yes, tell me, right? We've got another question. I uh, just wondered from a production point of view, away from the story, like what was the most difficult part? Like most of it was filmed in America. What was the only big problem with that? Uh, filming in America, no, it's just getting permission and paying, act, paying to get in there is probably the biggest problem. Uh, things were great at having to pay for things. Um, <laughs> but um, from the production, no, it was just a way of finding how to tell Tommy's crazy story, the story that, um, the stories that you wouldn't get if you were to make a documentary of Martin Brundle or Nigel Mansell or the other great drivers. Um, the stories are just very particular to Tommy. Um, and to tell them in a way that um, uh, that makes sense and are visually strong. You know, we felt we had to use animation to, to get those stories across. You know, I can't imagine Tommy's story, Tommy's story being told without um, references to certain episodes and characters in his life that he met. Um, so that was just a, that was really that was the main thing that we had to work on um, production wise was to push the budget, push the resources as much as we could to get those to get those animations in, and in essence to get those stories into the film. Tell me about who did those animations, and were you involved in telling you what sort of style you wanted, or yeah, did you make every <coughs> we, well, we definitely we had choices. Yeah, uh, David and uh, producer and I. And John did at the end of the editor. We did have um, uh, um, as much as you can when you're in a, a, again. They are directed by an animation director. So you kind of got to hand over a certain amount of control to an animation animation director. But we were part of the process, and they were very they were very open to open to the whole story. Just those little nuances that they got, everything everything's red and for McLaren and for the big chance that Tommy had. So they 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 opened the door, very open to the story. I then, I know that you're yeah. going to have your uh, Irish trip. Oh, yes, would you like to have Yes, a please. Chip in? Yes, please. Good. Excellent it's documentary. Lovely. Really enjoyed it. I'm just thinking, where does the film go from here? Is, are there any plans to uh, 
be shown on. I, I noticed there was a, a, a credit at the right at the start. It said BBC Northern Ireland and and RTE. Are there plans to, for it to be shown on maybe BBC Four or something like that? Well, it's all up, it all it all depends on this weekend, of course, and getting um, getting a sale. But there will be TV. It will be on um, BBC Northern Ireland and probably BBC Four by the end of the year, and also on RTE One. But we do hope to have a have a theatrical release. Um, that's very much part of our plan still. And we, we think this story, though it is a sports story, um, there's very much a human aspect to the whole thing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that's it. We're shopping for a um, for sales date this weekend. So yeah. Good luck with that. I think putting a word. Yeah. 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 Um, I'd just like to thank, um, first of all, the producer Dave for giving the opportunity to tell this story. You know, it's a it's a good story. And to get your hands on that is just, it's gold. Um, to McCrew, to Ray, and to to John, who's here, the editor, they put a huge amount of work in, a huge amount of level of attention, and the story, you can tell, I really believe that it's, it's a really, really well edited uh, film. Tight, concise, moves on well. Uh, and then thanks to the financier who are here, Film Board, RTE, and BBC Northern Ireland, and in particular to, um, to Keith there, who took a real interest in the story, Keith Holland from the Film Board, he took a real interest in the story, and was anxious to see cuts, which many, many commissioning editors and um, back that, you know, they see one cut and that's it, nobody needs to make it. But it was, it was important for him, I think, to, to see a, a lot of cuts. I think he trusted us with all of them. Um, maybe that's why he wanted to do it, to see all the cuts. But I think he just interested in the story. And when you have people behind you wanting to be, want, wanting, part of, wanting to help the story and to be an interested story, I think you're, you know, you're on to a winner. Good, good for you, Sean. Congratulations right. on your movie. Congratulations to you all two who were involved. And thank you all very much. Um, for your attention. Come on.